Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. I hope you had a very good weekend, that you have rested and enjoyed your activities with your family and friends. So we are going to start the class off today. And uh, as usual, it's going to be with the platform. Remember, please, that for tomorrow, we need to finish the midterm test. So this is the class of today. And uh, this is the question for you to participate in the forum. And uh, the class of tomorrow is going to be the 15. So we need to be finishing the homeworks, all the homeworks until 2.14. And then the one that is the midterm test. Remember that the midterm test is uh, four parts, okay? So it has this part that is for you to click on the options and then uh, we need to select on the second part. On the third part, you need to type. Let me know if by any chance there are some problems with that one. And the last part, also you need just to enter the verb. It's going to be just the verb in the gerund. And that will be it. So it's important that we remember that we need to finish that for tomorrow, okay? So if you have questions, let me know. And of course, it will be a pleasure to help you on that. Also remember that uh, you are able to inscribe, to, to start the process of the inscription for the next course. So you can speak with your human resources department to check if they have already sent this. The, uh, like the process, the papers for you to start the next level, okay? All right, we're gonna check their attendance, of course. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so we are going to start the class uh, with a little video so we can discuss about this part. So here we go, my friends. Let's pay attention and also let me know what you understood on this one, okay? So. Three days after the earthquake hit, the bank was busted. It was bankrupt, and it was Leeson's fault. Greed, conspiracies, and lies. These companies are guilty of them all. Martha Stewart was indicted on criminal charges relating to an insider trading scandal that began more than a year ago. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 corporate scandals. He'd been bankrupt. He'd been sort of living out of the trunk of his car. He was the kind of guy who was always talking up a story. For this list, we're taking a look at sensational controversies involving huge names from the business world, all of which have had wide-ranging consequences affecting companies and normal people alike. What began as an industrial accident hundreds of miles away could have such an impact on us. 
The crude crisis began on the evening of April 20th, 2010. We've based our choices on a combination of the money involved, how high profile the individuals and companies are, the impact of the scandals on others and their overall size, as well as whether any jail time was given out. I work on the trading floor. What, yeah. What's the mood like in there? Oh, terrible death. It's like a massive earthquake. Number 10, Briex gold mining scandal. Surely one of the biggest frauds in the history of the world, probably the biggest mining fraud of all time. The mining arm of this Canadian company shot to prominence in 1995 when it claimed it had discovered a huge gold store in Indonesia. The resulting increase in stock price saw Briex Minerals Limited make over six billion in Canadian dollars. But the bottom line was that it was all based on a lie perpetrated by geologist Michael de Guzman. The fraud came to light when de Guzman killed himself by jumping from a helicopter. Takes off over the jungle. He's about 400 or 500 feet in the air over some of the deepest rainforest in all of Indonesia. And the pilot looked into the back seat and de Guzman was gone. Further analysis of the mining site revealed there to be insignificant amounts of gold, which ultimately sent the company into bankruptcy. Although little money was recovered for those who were misled, the scandal did result in significant changes to Canadian legislation with respect to professional geology. It would be somewhat more difficult to pull off a similar type of scam, but it, it, it isn't impossible. It probably still could be done again. Number nine, IBM and the Nazis. During World War II, IBM played an integral role in carrying out the Holocaust in Poland. It's well known that many companies form questionable allegiances in the interest of business. Hi, I'm Jared the Subway Guy, and this is my story. But aiding the Third Reich in the systematic identification and genocide of millions of people is a crime many would label unforgivable. The punch cards by the millions had to be printed, and they were printed exclusively by IBM and the profits were recovered just after the war. The German subsidiary of the company allegedly provided punch cards to quickly analyze the ethnic backgrounds of the populations of countries the Nazis occupied to determine who should be imprisoned or killed in a concentration camp. The company has never openly admitted direct involvement with the Nazi regime, but this remains a black mark on one of the biggest corporations in the United States. The fact that they have used equipment you know, that is a fact, but how they got it, how much cooperation they got, and any kind of collusion trying to connect dots that are not connected, I think that's the part that is discredited. Number eight, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. A massive oil slick now covering some 600 square miles of the Gulf of Mexico, and it could start reaching the United States coast within hours. The major oil company known as BP may already have had a famously poor environmental record, but this disaster was the worst in the history of the petroleum industry. 11 people were killed in the initial explosion of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. But humans and animals continue to feel the detrimental effects of 210 million U.S. gallons of oil flowing into the sea. If this thing would have been a mistake, I could live with that. But this wasn't a mistake. It was just pure greed. The company was hit with charges that amounted to $18.7 billion in fines for their gross negligence and willful conduct. However, whether this amount of money is capable of reversing the environmental damage remains to be seen. Our accidental drilling spill again in the Gulf is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say, we are deeply sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Number seven, the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy. Stocks all around the world are tanking because of the crisis on Wall Street. The 2008 financial crisis was a tough time for reckless investment banks, as Bear Stearns found out. But the Lehman Brothers collapse was the economic event's greatest victim. Hi, sorry, do you work for Lehman? Yeah, I do, but... And how do you feel about all this happening? Very upset. The financial services firm's leveraging of borrowed money caused the biggest bankruptcy in U.S. history in 2008, and the company fizzled out of existence in a rapid decline that enhanced the economic devastation of the ongoing crisis. So you've been able to pocket close to half a million dollars, and my question to you is a lot of people ask, is that fair for the CEO of a company that's now bankrupt to have made that kind of money? It's just unimaginable to so many people. News emerged that executives increased their pay just before the bankruptcy and that accounts had been altered to hide the bank's poor financial position. 
This case stands as the perfect example of the culture of excess causing worldwide suffering for billions of people. This report comes just short of suggesting this is by no means an accident, but instead one of the greatest crimes ever perpetrated against a group of people. This crime, an accounting fraud perpetrated by bank CEOs against the American taxpayer and enabled by the U.S. government. Number six, Tyco International Theft. There are murderers out there who have spent less time in prison than Dennis Kozlowski has spent in time. Absolutely true. I've met him. Dennis Kozlowski and Mark H. Swartz were infamous for their extravagant lifestyles that were built through the success of the security systems company known as Tyco International Limited. And in 2002, they were accused of stealing over $150 million from the business. The then CEO and then CFO contended that the board had authorized these payments as bonuses. The following trial was something of a sham, but eventually both men were sentenced to up to 25 years in prison during a retrial. Due to the duo's falsification of records, Tyco was forced to pay almost $3 billion to defrauded and likely very angry investors. I earn 90 cents a day now, you know, so on a good week I make about 450 a week. Number five, the Bhopal disaster. The death toll of this 1984 disaster in India is claimed to be more than 16,000, but it's unknown how many people actually suffered as a result of the gas leak at the Union Carbide Indian Limited pesticide plant. Former Union Carbide Corporation CEO Warren Anderson was charged with manslaughter by Bhopal authorities, but never had to answer for the disaster as the U.S. refused to extradite him. In 1989, $470 million was paid by UCC to settle litigation, but a lawsuit seeking further compensation for crimes against humanity was dismissed in 2012. Anderson died two years later, with the Indian public still feeling as though justice had not been served. There was a number of safeguards that, that could have been and should have been in place, um, but, but they were not. Number four, the FIFA corruption case. Allegations of, of um, systematic corruption uh, and bribery over the last two decades, over two decades, are relating to all of the major or many of the major uh, football tournaments. The governing body for the most popular sport in the world has been dogged by constant accusations of corruption. But in 2015, these suspicions were confirmed. 18 individuals were indicted on charges, including money laundering and wire fraud. I don't know what I'm more surprised by, that FIFA officials were actually arrested or that America was behind it. <laughs> it took the country that cares the least about football to bring down the people who have been ruining it. There is considerable evidence that bribery of top officials has been key in deciding where major tournaments like the World Cup are held. The 2010 FIFA World Cup will be organized in yeah! South Africa. As of the end of 2015, the whole organization was still in turmoil as further accusations of corruption emerged regarding suspended President Sepp Blatter. Here we go, Sepp. That's, 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 Number three, WorldCom accounting fraud. WorldCom Incorporated executives Scott D. Sullivan and David F. Myers were charged with seven counts of securities fraud. This telecommunication corporation held the record for biggest bankruptcy in 2002 before the Lehman Brothers collapse took its unwanted title six years later. Throughout the early 2000s, the company was utilizing a complex scheme of adjusting its books to hide the considerable losses. Although I would like more than you know to answer the questions that you and your colleagues have about WorldCom, I've been instructed by my counsel not to testify based on my Fifth Amendment constitutional rights. By 2003, it's thought that their total assets had been fraudulently inflated by around $11 billion. In 2005, former CEO Bernard Ebers was convicted of various types of fraud that would keep him behind bars for 25 years, a sentence many would say was befitting someone who deceived so many. Hopefully um, it will deter people from um, hurting investors, former employees like myself, um, who basically have little or no uh, recourse except for a class action lawsuit. 
Number two, the Volkswagen emissions scandal. And in my German words, we have totally screwed up. In this case of fraud, it was discovered that one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world was using software to falsify emission test results, with an estimated 11 million of its vehicles being affected. While the findings by the International Council on Clean Transportation may end up costing the company more than $18 billion in fines, what should also be considered is the fact that Volkswagen's reputation in the eyes of the consumer could be irreparably damaged. As well as substantial financial consequences, the company could be responsible for deaths due to fumes that they had fraudulently stopped from appearing in tests. I, I don't think the company itself will fail, but uh, the company will suffer a lot uh, as a result of what's happened. Before we reveal our top pick, let's take a look at some dishonorable mentions. Barclays are not alone in this. The FSA is continuing to investigate the conduct of a number of other banks in relation to libel. We talked about apologies. And I told you that I owe a lot of people apologies. 73 anni provato dalla malattia, l'ex patron della Parmalat oggi non era in aula, ma gli arresti nell'ospedale di Parma. Peter Lusha has to investigate over a billion euros in bribes that were paid out before he came to Siemens. Number one, the Enron scandal. The fatal flaw at Enron was pride. Arrogance, intolerance. I love money you guys stole from those poor grandmothers. <laughs> in the space of a month or so, this energy giant went from being one of the biggest companies in the world to bankrupt. Our position as to whether Arthur Anderson committed a crime has not changed. They did not. Not a single person there did. What set the scandal apart from the relatively common instances of accounting fraud were the failures of accounting firm Arthur Anderson LLP, which neglected to report Enron's crimes and led to the firm's own dissolution. The sheer scale of Enron's fraudulent activity is difficult to comprehend, as it allowed the business to pretend it was running at $100 billion in revenues through the use of loopholes, poor financial reporting, and more to conceal its massive debt. Many critics thought that for an energy company to be so reckless was particularly abhorrent, and that those involved deserved their harsh sentences. Ken Lay's resignation yesterday only escalates the situation. Our hope is that we will not stop at resignations without dealing with some form of restitution to those that have been hurt. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the biggest corporate scandal? For more scandalous top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. We have. Okay, what did you get from this? In my opinion, teacher. In my opinion, it's really worry. Uh, give us a no. Uh, some cases that maybe. Mm, make some situation like this and also like the article said that maybe they are making a, a laundry money and maybe when they know that they are maybe uh Maybe when the when the bomb will explode, or maybe when other people maybe knows that they are making the, the laundry, the money laundry, uh, they maybe say that are in back bankrupting uh, to avoid uh, continue with that organization or company. And maybe they use other name, uh, other names to to can save some money about about what was laundry and in, in the past. So it's very complicated for for those times that that happen. I I, uh, I guess I don't know, but I guess. Uh, well. And now, nowadays, I guess that the policy is really back to those people uh, that making some situation like that. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, it's difficult to, to check some things. Sometimes you do not expect that to happen, but the problem is that that happens a lot. And... Uh, I mean, we don't know. I mean, we don't know what's going on right now with big corporations or countries who are 
big companies and the real problem is that maybe we don't work for them, but it impacts sometimes the economy of a country and sometimes the economy of the world. So it's a big yeah, problem. that's right. And also it's very, it's very worried about the employees that those company has uh, or have because it's very complicated in that moment that maybe the employees maybe don't know what the 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 majority of what the what the authorities mm -hmm. of the company are doing so i guess that maybe the company has to have one insurance maybe uh, against the bankrupt team because you know we as employees are uh, are looking for a better future or maybe we want to to be retired in some days okay so it's very worried about that yeah you are so very right sometimes employees they do their jobs and they don't know what's going on we trust right we trust in our leaders we trust in people that are in charge actually we respect them and we see them as oh my goodness i will never be the ceo of this company right but we don't know what kind of people are there on the top so is that is the big problem and as you say i mean uh, sometimes i mean it, it, it impacts in many ways and uh, to be an employee of one company the bigger that is, uh, we need to be just watching things. I mean, if if something happens, uh, if uh, an employee that is not uh, in the highest level makes something that is not correct, they just fire the people, right? But if a leader uh, makes some things that are not correct, that impacts the whole company and you can lose your job. As I understand, for example, the, in the U.S., yes, there is like a, like an insurance that the government takes in some kind of uh, corporations, depending on the on the kind of business that they are, but they they are they have an insurance, so they uh, they have some things covered, some things, not everything. Here in El Salvador, well, there are rules definitely, and uh, for but the banks is uh, go ahead. I guess that that happened in the U.S. because they pay some kind of taxes about that. That is correct. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. That's why. And here we don't pay that kind of tax. Yeah. So it's, it's a big problem, right? Yeah. Good. That's right. Perfect. Thank you, Jose Wilfredo. Any other comments or opinion on the video? Well, I was about to mention that it, I was impacted. I didn't know the, the one in the list for Indian. Wow. So... Uh, impacting because there were human beings affected in all of them there were human beings affected but in this case it was per life during their 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 whole life and the other i remember the most it was in media for everywhere it was the enron enron fraud uh, i think that maybe at the beginning, they start with the promise, increasing profits or giving something. But I don't know if these guys uh, make the plan they have all in place before starting all of this. I don't know. I remember in, in another session, one of my, my well, my uh, one colleagues mentioned that people, they, these type of people they don't have like values it's like uh, they see human beings like things because it doesn't matter how they will be affect they want to win or they want to get something extra even though at the end they know there is a risk because all of them they're in jail right or they are dead yeah. but the affections or the um, the consequences in people are there it's so impacting because how the selfish attitudes from one can um, reproduce in others, like like uh, Jose Wilfred was saying 
about the employees these companies have they might they may know what's going on they may know they're working in something that is not true i don't know it's uh, values in every it's, imp it's impressive i think very good yeah actually you're right it's impressive i mean for first of all how they are very intelligent but they make all these things exactly. in the wrong way very I mean. intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, because they they i mean the paper in the paper they were doing a lot of things but it was not real right mm -hmm. and they they were i mean they knew that it was a lie and they were spending the money and they didn't care i mean it was mm -hmm. it was crazy wow. and uh, to know that one i mean i mean that is something that is not a mistake right it's something that you plan that mm -hmm. you say, oh, I'm going to do this with the paper and then uh -huh. I'm going to have a new car. And I mean, that is for me, it's unbelievable. I don't know. Well, yeah. maybe because I have values, I, I cannot conceive that you will do this and this. And you know that that one for me, I didn't know about that. It seemed, it was impacting the images right there. That is true. Yeah. And I mean, maybe money at the end is, is something painful, but to, uh, to get somebody dead or uh, sick for life. I mean, that is a different mm -hmm. level, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comment or opinion? Okay, so do you know about any other scandal or any other things like this that has happened maybe here in El Salvador or any other international that you have heard? I don't remember the name, but it was like a, a financial of, a office they were promises the return uh, of investment it will be high but this man it, it was uh, a no man and as far as i understand because i was reading some news after he went to jail i don't remember his name but uh, at the end he went to jail and um but he took advantage in jail and he started teaching people yeah. in jail. <laughs> and the other, even though I, I don't understand so much of football, I remember the one Salvadorian football. Yeah, also, that was very famous. Right? Uh, there was a man killed here in Santana. I, yeah. I checked it. Uh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, so sometimes things like that happens, right? Uh, for example, right now, I'm, I was remembering that uh, the newspaper, I was reading that there are people that, that are making fraud, right? They, they call mm -hmm. you, they say, you know, there are, I, I am uh, one of your relatives in the US and I will send you some packages, mm -hmm. but I the need you case. to send me, uh, send me some <laughs> money. I mean, or mm -hmm. other people that they say, you won a prize, but you need to give me for, first of all, $200 mm -hmm. so I can give you the prize, so. You want to one of my it. neighbors, one of my neighbors, uh, she paid. Uh, she's an older woman, but uh, when they say the name of her niece, uh, in the real name of her niece, it, it was that the one that the woman gave, uh, and the one calling was so desperate, crying so so on. So uh, in the next couple of hours, she went to the bank and and made the the deposit. She she paid for that amount of money after. Like two days later, she realized was so proud. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah uh, maybe that is another interesting thing, right? That there are people that really believe in that one. I mean, I will. Be I believe that almost everybody, whenever somebody tells you you won a prize, uh, maybe you maybe ask questions, right? What kind of prize? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But whenever they say, yeah, the only thing that you need to do is to send me a hundred dollars. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is, it's not true, right? So I, I, I don't know. That is, it's, it's not good. Yeah, but it's very common nowadays. They do it in Facebook. They do it in all the social media. Uh, even with the jobs, sometimes they offer jobs that are not real, that you have to invest mm -hmm. or many things. So I believe that 
people are learning <laughs> bad things, right? So mm -hmm. that is not good. Any other fraud or scandal that you might remember? So you can provide an opinion about that one. Not at all. I remember some of those, let's discuss. For example, I was checking, uh, there is a movie. I believe that we checked about that one uh, a little before. You can watch the movie. I don't remember what is it, but uh, the name of the movie, but it was about a scandal in the US about this factory that made some pans, you know, for you to cook. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember if there is a word for that one in English, but they were made of the flung, right? So they discovered and they went to trial and they closed that one and it's forbidden, it's prohibited to sell pans of Teflon in the U.S. because they cause cancer. The sad part is that here in El Salvador, everybody has pans of Teflon, right? So here, nobody cares about these things. So we continue cooking in these things and maybe in 10 years you are going to say, Oh my goodness, I, I don't feel very well, you know. But it's because of that. It's because sometimes we research or we do not research properly about some things that cause an impact in other companies, but they decide to continue creating that kind of things and send them to other parts, right? So have you ever heard about that one, about that, the pants disaster there in the US? To be honest, teacher, it's the first time that I heard something similar about that. Yeah, that is true. So they do not sell that kind of things over there. Uh, well, here we're a Very good to know eating that every, every day, right? So delicious food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not good. that's right. <laughs> we need to be careful. Yeah, there was another one also that was very famous, and actually, I I was able to to know that it was true. Do you remember when this flu, the H1N1 was very famous around the world? And uh, well, the thing is that uh, I remember that the government says, okay, there is a vaccine and you need to take the vaccine and bring your kids to the vaccine and things like that. For some days, in, in, in those days actually, a little before that the government said that one, I was reading a paper, a newspaper from Spain. And in the newspaper actually said that there were people, some um, pharmaceutical companies that were testing, testing the vaccine in some countries. And they mentioned like seven countries, Haiti, Guatemala, El Salvador, of course, and things like that. So, uh, and also I remember that there were some people saying, do not get that vaccine. It's not good for your kids. And I heard that there were some kids that they had some problems, health problems, and actually some of those died. But it was something that it was like a rumor. I was sure because I read, actually I have the paper somewhere there. I took a screenshot because it was online where the news was there. And it was in Yahoo. And then I took this, this, the, you know, the screenshot and I was speaking with other people about that one. And when I sent the link, the link disappeared. It was not available anymore. So be, beyond that one, you need to understand. You need to understand that, I mean, these companies, these pharmaceutical companies, for them to get the vaccine here, they had to have a negotiation with the government, right? And you know, we want to test some vaccine with your people here in your country. Is that okay? We're going to give you some money. What do you think? Yeah, let's make it, give me the money and we'll tell everybody to get the vaccine. So that, in my experience, was true. It was not good. And actually at the end, people in Europe, they didn't get the vaccine. They said that it was not good. It was not healthy. Have you ever heard something about that? That was for the one commonly named the pig flu. I guess so, yeah. I remember there was H1N1 a long time ago, uh -huh, uh -huh. like 10 years ago. 
Okay. Yeah, it, it was terrible because I remember that it was mandatory to vaccine yeah. all kids in El Salvador. In fact, uh, we had a, 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 we suffered that situation in my family with my niece. She was a baby at the time, and in the, when she went to the normal vaccination uh, appointment. Uh, they also applied that vaccine. My niece was, she came with a high fever. Her doctor, because she always had a, a doctor, a pediatrician, was so furious. But immediately she, he uh, recommended and he uh, made the arrangement to, to, to vaccine her with like a um, something that will dismiss the effect of this. But yes, my niece was, wow, so sick because of this vaccine. And yes, in fact, there were kids dying for this vaccine. Yeah. It was a big mistake. It was an honor for the government at the time. Yeah, what well, the government did on purpose mm -hmm. to all the exactly. people. It was mandatory for all kids. If you, if they went to the East or any general hospital, it was like mandatory to vaccine them. It was awful. It was not good at all. I remember that my, my son was a small kid at that time and mm -hmm. I didn't talk him to the vaccine. And I mm -hmm. told everybody that I could, don't, don't do that one, right? Mm -hmm. No, and, and I remember they were at the school with a notification to the parents. They were just applying the vaccine. It was, for me, it was illeg illegal yeah not good i mean mm -hmm. uh it was not good at all definitely mm -hmm. so and it, you you think about that one why why they mm -hmm. are obligating me to do this one so mm -hmm. and i believe in vaccines i mean for my baby i i took all the vaccines everything for the COVID. i took the vaccine uh it was a different situation of course there is a risk mm -hmm. but at that time i knew that that was happening it was for sure I just applied the two vaccines for COVID because I wanted to to travel, and I didn't want it to pay <laughs> every yeah. time going now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, everybody yeah. was taking the vaccine. It was kind of different because you can see that in the US and in the Europe, they everybody was taking the vaccine. So mm -hmm. the environment was kind of different, different right? Different, exactly. Yeah, it's not the same that they say, uh, "Let's get the vaccine here in El Salvador, and we are going to wait and watch, right, to see what happens." So mm -hmm. not good at all. Good. Any other comment on that one? Do you remember that? No comments. There are, there are many things like this. There, there was also another documentary that I was watching. Maybe, well, if I find the link, I believe in YouTube is not anymore. They deleted it. There is, uh, there is the name for this thing that is programmed obsolescence. Do you know what is that? Well, I watched this documentary uh, and it starts with a, a boy that he wants, I mean, his printer uh, broke. It didn't print anymore, but I mean, everything was fine. He, he was like analyzing why, why this is happening. And he went to all the uh, these uh, companies that sells printers and repair computers. And everybody said, you know, oh, this printer is broken. You need to, to purchase a new one. Everybody said exactly the same. But he was researching about that one. And he got to know that inside of the printer, there is a chip. This little chip counts every printing that you do. And when this chip counts until, I don't remember how many are there, around 30,000 printers or 4,000, I remember. The chip says to the printer, do not print anymore. You're broken. I mean, but it's just an order from a chip. And then he started researching on that one and he realized that this is something that is very old, that in the 50s, the people that they create the light bulbs, you know, uh, like Philips and all those things, they had created a light bulb that they can't be on for more than a hundred years. But then they decided on purpose to decrease the quality because they say, I mean, if we do this, 
the people they are not going to buy anymore. So we need to decrease that one, that the light bulbs, they are like one year or something like that, so they can buy more. And that same thing happens to many other things. Like for example, the, um, some clothes for women, you know, the ones that they use when they go to the office or the Gillette did that one as well. The, the razors before they were very, very good, but Gillette said, you know what, it's not good. I mean, we're going to break our business if we do that one. We need that the razors had low quality so the people continue buying that one. And that grew, grew in all the companies. And actually that is happening. You can see that the cars, the computers, the TVs are not the same as they, as they used to be before. They get broken faster now. And uh, in, the, in the documentary also, you can see that in the US, when you are studying to be an engineer or an inventor and things like that, there is a subject that is for that one. They teach you that you need to create a product that is going to last a period of time and then it's going to be broken so that people can buy more products. And that is part of the consumism that we have right now. Of course, there is no ethics on that one, right? But it's in the world that we live right now. I mean, even relationships are not good anymore sometimes i mean it depends on many things but it's very difficult sometimes to find good friends or a good relationship sometimes because people products everything is changing so what do you think about that one Uh, teacher, I think that is a real problem because um, something that maybe will be um, a good this uh, a good discouragement. I don't know if the correct word or a good for the human race. For example, imagine um, the electric car that also is a something real now, but. Uh, or in, imagine um, um, uh, something that changed the, our life, for example, not use completely the oil or something like that. Uh, for the ambitious, ambitious of the people, uh, the human race not, uh, not uh, increase is value or, or get profit for the the ideas of someone because is that impacts in the market and there are uh, many bad person that interrupt that idea so uh, that that thing is a real problem for for or benefit that is true. Actually, the real problem are the people, the leaders that are in front of the companies, the greed, the love for the money, right? They don't care about the environment. They don't care about people. And then uh, they cause a lot of problems. You might think that it's a problem with uh, that happens only in the movies, but actually that is their real life. Not that crazy as the movie, but that happens, that happens a lot. Any other comment on this? It's kind of complex, I, I think, because uh, uh, these situations you should, or you could analyze um, from two points of view one from the customer uh, and for this side you want uh, products that uh, last a life at least okay but <clears throat> obviously like you said before uh, if you uh, from the point of view of the 
uh, developer or the man manufacturer, uh, if you design a product that lasts a life, you won't see a, um, how to say this, ganancias, prof profit? Profit, profit? yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You won't see profits. And uh, maybe uh, your product, because you will sell just once, uh, you should uh, establish a, a high price, okay? In order to just one sale uh, as the better incomes to your organization, but, uh, and this is happening with cars, with electronics, uh, like, uh, for example, TVs. Uh, yeah, in, in cars is kind of exactly, because uh, if you go through the street, uh, you, you can see uh, cars, old cars, okay? Not maybe a good and good model cars, but uh, some old cars that are uh, running uh, nowadays, uh, the material is different and more resistant than uh, the materials from uh, nowadays cars. So um, the, the man manufacturers, yeah, the manufacturers are uh, trying to, to deliver uh, products that, uh, that have a, a lifetime, a, a low lifetime in order to you go and buy another uh, item or another product. And obviously to get profits uh, about it. Okay. Yeah, that is true. I mean, there are points of view for that one, and definitely we need people to inject money into the economy, right? That is something that yeah. is good for for everybody, because then you are going to have a job, and uh, a lot of things are going to happen. Definitely, from the point of view of ethics, of course, it's not correct, right? So it's something that it shouldn't happen. I mean, if companies ask you to come and work a lot and sometimes stay late with no more payment and things like that, you expect them to do the right thing as well, right? So there are many things. Actually, I found I found the uh, documentary is in Spanish. Sadly, it's not in English. Well, I don't remember if it's in English, uh, but I sent it there to the, to the group. If you want to check it out, it's not that long. It's 50 minutes, something like that. Okay, so a question for you. What are some unethical practices that we can find in our work, in any companies that we have in El Salvador? Have you ever find some unethical practices? Misleading to the customer, uh, offering um, higher values for a product and maybe at the time of performing this product, is not performing as is expected. Um, yeah, misleading. Uh, like um, also offering, in my case, I sell, in my company, we sell some equipments that they are connected in the, in the vehicles, in the trucks, and they have a cable. So some, uh, in order for these two work synchronized, the driver must download an application on his or her uh, cell phone. But most of the time people prefer to use like a tablet. The issue is that sometimes, uh, I don't know because they don't, one of my, some of my colleagues, they make people to understand like if we are sending also the tablet and it's for free and it's not, that is not true. And then it comes the misunderstanding people, go when they get the equipments they are back and forth with different departments it's a bad customer experience but that is the most that i've seen or offering a um, uh, performance or characteristic that this product will be do this will do that will whatever 
And at the time of using those equipments, they are not performing as they are expected. So that misleading. I, I, in my case, that is the most that I've seen with my colleagues. And they, they achieve their goal, their revenue goals, and they feel like rocking stars because of that, because they are top performance. But I know it's not ethical. And we know all of, know, all of us, we know, but at the end, it seems like in the company, those stuff uh, are not enough. And at the end, they are looking for the revenue. That is my perception. In my case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, that is something that is very common. Uh, companies, they tell you, you are going to get this and this and this sometimes. It's not true. Companies, people that work there just because of the money. Again, the money maybe is the biggest thing that they are after. And sometimes we break our values and, and we practice some unethical things. Any other practice that you have seen uh, in companies or at work? In the... In the companies who uh, sell products like uh, home furniture or, or something, electronics or whatever, um, in in uh, at the time when the black no black um, black Friday is coming, uh, they um, offer some prices. Okay, some lower prices, but uh, in um, years before, uh, the institution who who um, regular regularized, yeah, Re regulates. Ah, who regulates this situation has uh, discovered that uh, those prices, no, yeah, prices, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those prices are not a kind of legal because a, they just put um, a higher price, uh, but just for a, I don't know if this word is correct, for scamming you or for a lie to you. And the price is the same, but these announcements are just for a uh, decoy you and uh, make you to buy this or that item. And this is this is not ethical. Um, I think the last year, or no, the, the year before the last. I think the this institution uh, was talking about this, and other people, other uh, people who are not related with this institution, uh, there are some uh, who they in, investigate investigate uh, they investigate about the about this. Uh, companies, but uh, at a personal, a title personal, a personal title, I don't know, uh -huh, a personal title, and uh, they show you in social media, like Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, that the prices that are they that they are offering you are a, are a, 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 a big lie to you. So they, uh, um, they try to, call to your attention in order to do not buy these days because uh, some other companies, they are high, high, elevando los precios. Getting higher. Getting higher the prices of the products. Yeah, and that obviously is unethical. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, that is something that is very common. I mean, Black Friday was very famous in the U.S. and now it's very popular here in Salvador. But that is true. There are companies that uh, it's the same price the way that, that they are offering you, the, but they just put that it's a big offer, a big deal and things like that. So 
that is true that is true it's not good and uh well it shouldn't be that way the good thing is that also now with the social media uh, we are able to to share and we are able to listen to people that actually are providing feedback so you understand and be careful on what to buy or what to do right so that is a very good thing good any other uh unethical practices at work Okay, so we know that it's very important to have ethics at work, and actually we're gonna read about that one today, but how can we promote ethics at work? If you are the leader and your boss says, you know, we're going to launch something that I want everybody to have more values, have ethicals, and they have, uh, we have something in common, like a parameter, right? So you are going to be the one who will promote ethics at work. What would you do? Uh, maybe uh, trying to have um, maybe an a specific activity um, with the human resources or with the, the close team. And maybe uh, like a team building, I guess. And mention uh, some topic about the real situation and try to share a different points of view with the rest of the team. And maybe um, if you are working on that, twice in a no sé, cada six meses how do you say that? Every six months a, a couple of, of uh, days in the rest of the year maybe you can build a strong ideas about ethic but usually when you are uh, working in, in a company uh, you receive uh, some information about a uh, culture or ethic or a uh, different uh, topic when you uh, start to work in that company and when you are working uh, with your leader or uh, with your team maybe in that uh, time you have not received another feedback or extra activities about that. And I imagine, well, in my case, I feel comfortable when I can share some activities like that uh, frequently. Maybe once uh, in, a, in a month or I don't know, maybe. But I think it's important when you are, when you give um, maybe a extra activities at, in, your, in your team because uh, you change the environment. So it's different when you, when you uh, give rules and when you explain with uh, real activities or with different other activities okay yeah very good so yeah we need to, to do some activities to try to bring everybody with different situations and share values right that is very important i believe mm -hmm. that all the companies we have some values and it's supposed that everybody that works at those companies they follow those values that are like very general right so that that should be the way any other comment on how to promote ethics at the workplace? No. 
no more comments. Okay, we are going then to check the attendance. So, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So we are going to continue with the class. And we're going to check a little everything here. Okay, 23 ethical and unethical behavior examples in the workplace. So the first part is going to be for Suleyma Yvonne. Help me please with the first part. Is it possible for you, Ivan? Okay, Juan Miguel Brand, please. Okay, workplace ethics, yeah? Yep. Okay, workplace, workplace ethics are a dynamic set of values that vary with people and, they, and their definition of, the, of a workplace. For some, it is a physical office they go to every day, while others, their home office. It doesn't matter whether you work from home or commute to work every day. Workplace ethic is required to build, to build a successful career. Organizations are known to embrace ethical practices and behaviors to increase productivity and uphold integrity, while setting a penalty for workers who default workplace ethics. Following a predefined workplace ethic is a little harder for freelancers and business owners because there is usually no disciplinary comi committee, yeah? Committee. To punish them, committee, to punish them for, for defaulting. It is, however, evident that for them to not, to not lose clients, they need to in, imbibe, imbibe. imbibe workplace ethics into themselves. Good. What did you get from this? Uh, I think the essence is about uh, how you behave uh, in your work, not only or not just to commute to the office, but also uh, staying at home. Okay, uh, the, your office, uh, you don't have to, um, to think that are uh, built from four walls, okay? Your office is where you sit uh, um, to complete your tasks if you are home, in your home office, okay? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just go to a, working space or something like that but your office is the if you want to see like this the table or the desk when you sit and you complete your tasks uh, uh, but this situation I think is kind of related with 
uh, your values, maybe your education, maybe, and the way that you the, uh, the way that you should or you must perform your your duties or your activities. Okay, not no no matter if uh, someone is watching you or not. Okay. Um, at the end, it, they say that uh, for freelancers, are more maybe um, kind of vulnerable because uh, you don't sign uh, a traditional contract, but by the time, by the time where you are uh, sharing, sharing maybe or working to to one person or to one company. Uh, you must uh, show that you are ethic, okay? In order to, uh, yeah, give a good impression, but uh, to have and to perform your tasks, obviously, very well, and to, to show them that you are a... Uh, um, loyalty person to the team or to the company or something like this. I'm not I'm not listening to your teacher. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Good, good. So yeah, yeah, of course, definitely the workplace is not just to go to an office. So it's where you are, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, you need to to have I mean, ethics and you have to be responsible no matter where you are. Very good, interesting, this part that is the introduction. So uh, this the, uh, second part is going to be for Roxanne. Is it possible for you? Workplace, ethic. Uh, yeah. Okay, what is workplace? Workplace ethic. Workplace ethic are the sorry are the set the set of values, moral prince principles, principles, and standards that needs to be followed by both employers and employees in the workplace. It is, it is the it is the set of rules and relation that needs to be followed by all staff of the workplace. These ethics are implemented by employers to foster both employee employee relationship and employee customers relationships. An organization may decide to put this ethic into writing or not. They are, however, meant to be followed. The ex there exit some general workplace ethic that don't need to be uh, de defined by the employee by the employer by our common ethical behaviors employer employees needs to ex exhibit 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 thank you in the same vein some organization specific ethic may need to be defined in a company handbook good what did you get from this well, in general, in general, uh, when you are working in a company or when in, or when you are a part of a team or group, uh, you it's important that you uh, identify your values and the values of the team or in the company because uh, you need to um, establish a good 
environment with the rest of the person that you are um, in communication on the, all the time. And it's important, uh, but it's not necessary uh, in a company, for example, uh, it's not necessary that uh, human resource, resources, for example, um, maybe give um, like a manual because uh, I think that some uh, situation or some values are uh, maybe um, come with, uh, are um, like a normally or um, some como demasiado obvious like obviously so it's um, maybe uh, you need to have that chip in your mind and try to be ethic in the first time and maybe when you receive uh, um, maybe a feedback or uh, rules or some extra values uh, maybe you can uh, complete your basic information but in general uh, I, I according to my point of view i think that everything needs to uh, have the basically uh, knowledge about that topic to apply in different situation with uh, your family with your company with your close friends in general and uh, when you receive extra information you you can learn more about about that. Uh, for example, when you are uh, working in your first job, uh, you always are learning not only process and concept. Maybe uh, you never has working uh, with a team, and now you are working with uh, a big team and maybe uh, you are learning everything about that person and uh, you can complete your uh, ethic things or ethic uh, uh, thoughts, pensamientos, yeah? Thoughts, yeah. And it's in general, right? But, uh, I imagine that uh, it's important when uh, the company try to um, build in your mind or in the rest of the uh, teams uh, that uh, situation that you are you need to uh, all the time working with a ethic form uh, in different uh, kind of situations kind of situation but um, for me every every people need to uh, create their own uh, ethic uh, form and apply every situation in that uh, way because it's, it's, it's complex if you are a leader and you are looking for a good a team player for your company and you decide to give that opportunity uh, to a specific guy or, or girl. Uh, it's complex when uh, you try to transmit some um, values, but maybe that person doesn't have the basic information by himself or herself. So you maybe you can uh, teach some um, topic, but I think that is or uh, maybe or homework or task, try to develop um, ethic way for our uh, situation, for our life in general? 
Okay. Yeah, actually, very good. Yeah, I mean, we expect a behavior, right, from everybody. And this is so, so important that, you know, that in the most of the company, whenever you apply to the company, to any position, you need to pass a uh, psychological mm -hmm. test, right? So that is part mm -hmm. of ethics. What would you do if this happens? And there are some options. So definitely, it's something that is very important. And companies, they look for you to have a behavior according to the values in every situation, right? So they expect that you are that person. It doesn't matter what happens. Mm -hmm. Good. So it says examples of ethical behaviors in the workplace. Examples of ethical behaviors in the workplace includes obeying the company's rules, effective communication, taking responsibility, accountability, professionalism, trust, and mutual respect for your colleagues at work. These examples of ethical behaviors ensure maximum productivity of output at work and could be pivotal for career growth. So we're going to check all of them. The first one is going to be for Giselle. Is it possible for you, Giselle? Yes, teacher. Just give me a minute. Of, of course. Okay. Obey the company rules? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Obey the company rules, companies' rules and regulation. At the start of an employee contract, companies may need the employee to sign various documents including the company rules and regulation agreement form. Also, the employee may be, may be given a handbook that may serve as a guide. Some common rules are tardiness, inappropriate dressing and language, etc. Due to the excitement of getting a new job, some employees do not properly read these rules and may end up deferring them in the future. Therefore, it is important that new employees properly read these rules and regulation in order not to defer them. Good. What do you get from this? That that completely agree with this. And and for example, when I start uh, in Claro, I remember that they um, gave me a kind of guide of the rules of the 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 company right mm -hmm. and then with time the company assures you that you uh, have the right information about for example the um, uh, ethic code mm -hmm. uh, the internal uh, i don't remember uh like the internal internal rule rules like i don't know how to say the teacher uh, reglamento interno yeah internal rules yeah that would be it that is yeah. no for that one huh? so you can uh, uh, you have like like that like a guide to act a uh, uh, as an employee of the company and uh, you have the guide to to how to proceed properly for example if you have to do something that in order to or that are related to to your position how is the the process you know that you have to to do uh, and in future you, you you don't have problems with the company and need your boss neither neither your 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 colleagues and so very agree with this and it's very very important that the companies uh, assures you this kind of this kind of information when you are new or when you are starting in a new department for example that the the, the information and, and everything is different okay very good perfect yeah actually that is true and also it's very important what it says sometimes because you need the job because you are excited about this new position uh, you say yes i'm gonna sign whatsoever right but then i mean it's important for you for everybody to read what is this about, ask questions. I mean, for example, in appropriate dressing, what do you mean? I mean, of course I won't come in shorts, right? But what else includes this one? So you are sure that you are not going to rule the, 
uh, break the rules. So, and uh, that happens a lot. So, whenever you are studying, you say yes to everything, but you really need to read those things. Next one is going to be for Jose Rivas. Not possible. Roberto Orellana. Not possible either. Heidi Salguero. Not possible either. Me teacher. Okay, go ahead, please. Communicate effective, effectively. <laughs> Effective communication is very important to avoid misunderstanding when dealing with issues in the workplace. Communicating effectively may mean different things to people at different points in time. <clears throat> Let us consider the hypothetical. Yep. Okay. Hypothetical situation of an employee trying to relay information to a French speaking customer. The best way to communicate effectively with the customer is to have an employee who can speak French related information. Effective communication may also have an employee breaking one of the rules and regulation of the company without getting penalized for it. An employee reaching out to HR that they will be coming in late due to some unforeseen circumstances may be spared for coming late if the situation is properly communicated. Good, what do you get from this? Oh, well, like, like we, we were talking in this, in this module, uh, communication is very important in, in the workplace, in, in your home, in every, in every place, it's very, very important, uh, good communication uh in the workplace is, is essential so i agree with the with the hypothetical situation because is you you have uh, you had your company and and your attention to your customer uh, <clears throat> uh need to be the best attention you need to have the the appropriate person prepare for prepare for your activity so it's it's important that uh if you have a a person that not <clears throat> um they don't have the preparation they don't have the knowledge for for attending your your business uh, the business show it bad and your company lost maybe lost uh, customers maybe lost um i don't know how to say credibility credibility oh credibility simple <laughs> so um so it's it's important but it's important that this 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 team and all this team is based in communication because if you don't have the 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 knowledge you as employees you need to communicate with your boss and in your boss uh, must communicate with you and find a solution for for all the problem this is high this is a hypothetical situation but there is a lot of a lot of problem that need uh, communication for a boy's misunderstanding uh, for a boy and that the problem is bigger with along the time. So uh, communicate is it's essential, like, like I say. Perfect, thank you, Fernando. Actually, you are so right. To communicate effectively is essential, right? In every way. I mean, uh, with your peers, co-workers, with your boss, with your customers, even when you send an email, when you, uh, I mean, in anything that you may want to do, that is essential, okay? And also 
well, uh, it's not just communicate, actually effectively, right? That you are able to convey the message and that the message was received and understood. So that is very, very important. Good, good. So the next one says develop professional relationship. That is for Maria Alejandra. Good professional relation, relationships are not only a thing that fosters teamwork among employees, but also help with individual career development for employees. Developing professional relationships with coworkers or the other professionals outside the workplace, we also directly directly or indirectly improve productivity. Professional relationships between low level and high level employees will make it easier for ideas to be shared and knowledge to be passed to junior employees. And where the company can confident, confidently have an interwork on a tow prior to meet a pending deadline due to the guidance from older employees, sailors, salespeople, for one need to build external professional relationships with professionals from the other organization, especially those who are potential clients. The relationship will help create a contact, a contact person in another organization in case they need to sell a product to them. Good. What did you get from this? <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe all that around to that relationship that. Um, um, external or internal for that the company that is important because you don't maybe you don't have idea when you need to that contact for the other person to to know or to connect with the person that you offer or that you're thinking when a potential client for your product or your company or maybe that uh, three, uh, take example for that uh, to change the position for example the junior or senior that are different and different companies and maybe Mm, I don't know. It may be that the these uh, contact list is conf confidentially for that all companies and try to don't translate or to pass when you change out the other work because I think that is not honest. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So yeah, to develop yourself and develop your peers is very, very important. So uh, it's not going only the technical and the operational knowledge, the one that we're going to pass through, but also the values, right? So the way things should be done. The other one says take responsibility. This is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. Take responsibility. It is important for employees to always take responsibility for decision made both individually and in a team. This is in fact a leadership trait, trait that every employee who is looking to take up a managerial position in the future should exhibit. Oh, okay. Understandable employees may want to save their job 
and are therefore scared of taking responsibility for a particular event. However, they shouldn't let these, uh, they shouldn't let these uh, affair take them out of the team. For example, the communication team came up with a marketing strategy for the company and it failed. The team members are to, are to jointly take responsibility for this failure. Not individuals coming out that they weren't part of the decision-making process. If the strategy has gone the other way around, they wouldn't have said the same. Good, what did you get from this one? Mm, that it's important to take risk and the responsibility of those of the decisions, not thinking that it will be just an individual responsibility work always as a team, right? Either if it, this is a success, um, 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 a success um, a situation or not, uh, always try to resolve everything as a team. And sometimes uh, there are positions in the companies and you don't want to take them or take advantage of them because you think what will happen if uh, one thing is not uh, going okay or going through as is expected, I will lose my job. And not all the times it works in that way, but I will add that it depends on the company's values because there are companies that they are comprehensive in that way, but there are others that if you fail, you go out. Okay. Very good. Yeah, actually, it depends on many things. And uh, I mean, it's if you take a risk, if you make a decision, definitely you have to be responsible about these things, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and if by any chance you do a mistake, of course, uh, your boss will expect you to come and speak with him or her just before it complicates more than it should be. So, mm -hmm. just go straight for it, say what happened, and expect that everything, I mean, that everything is going to be fine and that you are going to correct what you did or uh, avoid to do that again. So that's mm -hmm. great. Good, perfect. Professionalism standards. So that is for Francisco. No teacher, uh, professional, uh, pro professionalism standard. Okay, teacher. There are professional standards that every team and employee does in the workplace. They use us in formal work in a formal workplace is highly unprofessional. This stand, this standard should be held high and applied to every part of an employee's activity in the workplace. This should include the way the way they speak, kind of work they deliver, and their relationship with coworker and customer. Okay, what did you get from this? Um, uh, uh, this, uh, it depends on the, the kind of, of work. Uh, I think the, the, the most uh, used in this case is when the work uh, is, uh, for example, sales, for example, uh, uh, customer service, because uh, uh, there, there are uh, uh, many uh, uh, contact with the, with the client. With the, with the customer. And I think it's, it's very important to uh, try uh, to uh, manage a, a corporate, uh, a corporate uh, way to speak, I think. Okay, very good. So yeah, there are some standards and professionalism is something that yeah, is expected from everybody, right? So we don't have to say exactly what is to be professional. I mean, you need to be professional in every aspect of your job and everybody expects that from you. So that is very important. 
be accountable. That is going to be for Danny. Okay. Be accountable. Accountability is also a very good trait of an employee. One of the things that may short change a talented and responsibly and responsibly uh, irresponsible is the lack of account accountability. Lack of accountability may result in your both thinking you have an I don't care attitude to the company's project of worse take your take you as a liar and may lead to job loss and in the long run. For example, at the beginning of each year, a certain amount of money is allocated to each department. The manager is meant to oversee how this money is spent. If at the end of the year, the manager cannot make an account of how the money was spent, he may then be suspected of a stealing company found. Good. What did you get from this? Um, um, accountable in this context is like responsibility. Yeah. Taking responsibility yeah. for the actions yeah. that you do. Huh? Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, this is um, about uh, be like that, the responsibility of the thing that you you have to do, you have to show that you are um, com uh, how would the word commit commit committed committed uh, yeah with the with the objectives or with um, or with the work that you have to do um, and that response give you have to give the um, the results and the all, all the 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 answers of the question that my that my ask you or all for all of your actions very good so yes definitely you are going to be responsible for a team for resources for time so for example if you have a task to do and then you don't do that one and your boss comes like, what did you do, right? So you need to manage everything in a way that is going to be properly done and uh, be responsible for this to happen. So next one says uphold trust. Uh, Fernando, could you please help me with this? Sure, teacher. Uphold trust. An employee should not do anything that may make his or her employee withdraw trust. As an employee of a company, your employee trusts you to get work done perfectly on time. Things like missing deadlines regularly or delivering work that needs to be revised over and over again will deny you a promotion. It may even lead the employer not giving you tasks to complete in the future, a nightmare for freelancers. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, only I need to know what how. Yeah, to keep and continue growing. Uh, okay. Uh, out of trust. Okay. Um, I talk from my experience uh, because I I think that this paragraph is according to. The situation of the last year before uh, in the pandemic because uh, we were obligated to do uh, work uh, home office <laughs> sorry home office so it's important the trust in the work in the employee and the employees for this kind of situation because um, uh, for example in my area uh, I especially I don't need to to be in the office. I I can do my job from my home, but based in trust because some people fail it in that time, 
uh, the home office was remote. So today I, I had to go to the office uh, and all the days or a diario? Daily. 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 And for me, it's, it's, it's better stay at home. But uh, the situation was because some people don't keep the trust. Some people waste, waste the time and they don't uh, reach their goals or they don't reach the deadlines. So <laughs> this paragraph is, for me, is applied to this situation. I don't know if just turn the way I say. Okay. Yeah, actually, that is it. I mean, and the yeah. example that you provided is totally true. I mean, sometimes you do your job and you do your best because you're happy working from home. But if one or two people, they don't do their job and they don't achieve the goals, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the employer is going to say it's better to take them back to the office, right? So that is not good at all. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that it should happen. You, it doesn't matter where you are, you need to, to have the trust, right, of the employees and trust in your employee. Good. Next one, show initiative without being told. That is going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Okay, show initiative, initiative without being told. Is the company running behind deadline and you feel you can stay a few extra hours after work to finish up, do it. You are a freelance designer and your client wants to particular poster design but doesn't have a copywriter to write the content. If you can write the contents, do so. Don't delay a client works because of a few contents. Okay, what do you get from this? Well, to be honest, teacher, this is really good uh, uh, option if you want to show on what are you making. Okay. Because you know, if you have a well, if you are independent. Uh, if you have your own business, you have to do it because you want to one, uh, you want to one uh, more customer. You want to win more customer every day, and also if you work for a company, so maybe that that is like extra mile. Very so good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, this is something that I mean all. Oh. The bosses around the world they love from employees, right? That uh, if something is is needed to be done, you say I'm gonna do it, and that they trust that you're going to do a very good job to to come with new ideas and to show up uh, better ways to do something. I mean that is amazing. So in the future, if anybody has ideas or opinions, it's a very good idea to go to your boss and tell them of course you need to to find the right time but don't don't lose that opportunity yeah that's right good perfect so respect your colleagues uh, ramon is it possible for you okay so uh, then let's see did you sell? Of course, teacher. Uh, respect your colleagues, right? Yeah. Okay, respect your colleagues. It doesn't matter whether you are dealing with the intern, a junior, janitor, etc. They should all be treated with respect. As a manager, treating your team members with respect will help will help improve their productivity, giving constructive criticism and saying kind words to them, even when they are not able to deliver perfectly, will help them strive to do better in the future. Good, what did you get from this? 
that is very important to encourage in a good way uh, to all the colleagues, uh, no matter if you are the manager or, or if you are another employee. And uh, it really helps when you receive uh, some kind of kind words or, or positive, I don't know, opinions um, about your work or, or the things related to your position. Very good, perfect, thank you. So yeah, I mean, respect is something that we expect from everybody and we can give, it's for free and it's very nice to, to respect everybody, to say hello, to greet, to, I mean, to act in the way that you should be. So that would be it. Works matter, Jose Rivas. Not possible, Heidi. Not possible, Marcus. Works matter, uh, don't just work hard, works matter. The reason why you see an employee promoted to the post of the manager after two years and hardworking and hardworking employee who has been with the company for 10 years failed to get the promotion is a smart work. Assume that these two employees are data scientists who collect data and analyze them. A smart employee will use their firm plus data collection tools to collect data and receive real-time data analytics. While a hard work, hard working employee will print paper-based forms and do the hard work of sharing it to the respondents. Okay, what did you get from this? Okay. Okay. Um, I understand that um, we have to work, uh, not just do the hard work. Uh, for example, imagine that I am a um, um, self person, and uh, the boss always sees me with uh, um, um, talking with the with the client. And, trying to convince them, but I never get to, to increase my, my sales. And perhaps other sales rep um, doesn't work that hard as, as me, but he increases his sales because he works. He has some analytic or some way to do uh, or or his his sales better than me. And for example, he use a tool or use a, a other ways to convince people to to buy. And and that doesn't mean that he works hard. He only play with the tools he has, and so he achieved the goal and easier than me and faster than me. So uh, he gets the promotion. And me that I was working in the company for 10 years, always, I always get at the door of the promotion, but I never get to that, to get that promotion. So it's important that, that keep in mind that with the advancing technology, we have to, all day constantly and work as smart every day. Okay, very good, perfect. Yeah, this is very, very true. Actually, this is a story that I was told in, sometimes I I give um, a motivation, uh, motivational speeches or something like that. And this is a story I used to share with people that there was uh, this employee that worked for 10 years in the company. He worked very hard. He helped everybody. And then it came another person that in two years, he became one of the bosses and he was very angry. And he came to the, to the boss to say, how is that possible that you took 
this person for the new position and I've been here breaking my heart and breaking everything, giving you everything. And the boss looked at him and said, uh, do me a favor, I'm going to answer your questions, anything that you may want, but I, I need you to do something for me. Please go to the store that is on the corner and uh, please check wh what are the prices for the apples, okay? Could you please do that for me? So the men went out to this corner and came. Well, the apples are, I don't know, five for one dollar. Okay, he said, sit down and look at this. And he uh, called the other guy, the one that was promoted, right? And he said, could you please do me a favor and go to the corner and tell, check what are the prices on the apples? Okay, he said. And he went to the corner and when he came back, he said, you know, there are uh, apples that are five for one dollar, but you can also get watermelon that is going to be one for one dollar. And there are uh, peers that you will be able to get three for one dollar. If you are going to provide fruit to the employees, I got a discount if we get uh, from the three kinds of fruit. So we can check that one. If you tell me, I will go and check on that one. So he said, thank you. And look at the other guy and say, this is why, this is the reason why this person has a job and not you. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes we work very hard, but for you to be a leader or a boss or a, be in a different position, you need a little bit more, right? To think out of the box. So that happens, that happens a lot. Thank you, Marcus. Unethical workplace behavior, lies, okay? So any relationship work if you lie. So let's see, Anna Claudia, help me with this one, please. Okay. Lies, lying is a trait that is detested in and outside the workplace. It kills trust, affects relationship, and may even put people in trouble. There are different situations where employees lie in the workplace with just one lie open in the floor for many others. It could be a sales manager lying about the number of clients they were able to get in a month or an employee calling in six, in six, six wow. <laughs> just to attend another job interview. A lot of employees start lying from their CV by adding experience they didn't acquire and the skills they don't have. Employees need to understand that lying about work may eventually get them in trouble and needs to stop before they lose their job. However, we notice that employees lie due to fear of their employees. An employee will call in sick to go for interviews because companies frow against employees interviewing at another company. HR should put up a more friendly culture that will encourage people to progress in their careers, taking up other jobs and even support them through the process. Okay, what do you get from that? Yeah, it's a common practice to lie. Like I was saying before, early in this session that, lying for a product or lying in order to sell or get achieve my goal, but at the end you are lying. And in this case, uh, when you're known as a liar, uh, it's like uh, the old movie, <laughs> Liar, Liar. Nobody believes in you and nobody takes you in like a serious person. Um, that is like um, going progressive and is uh, affecting all the other team members. It's not creating a, a good environment uh, for the company. And at the end, you don't feel like comfortable and you lose, at the end, you're, you're losing your interest to continue in those companies. In the last paragraph, it mentions that sometimes employees must, uh, they lie because they are looking to progress in other companies. Yes, the companies should uh, create or provide like a path to grow up. And it's up on you if you want to apply, you continue growing or stay uh, in the same position you are. Very good, perfect. So 
Uh, yeah, this is true. And I mean, imagine if you start your job with lies in your resume, mm -hmm. uh, that is yeah. not good, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that is not good. it's better to, to be honest, or I mean, you can say I will learn. I mean, if you teach mm -hmm. me or, or I will take a course and I will be able to learn anything that you may want me to learn. But if mm -hmm. you lie from, the, from that point, it, it's not going to be a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Good. So there are many other unethical behavior. For example, taking credit for others' hard work. I believe that maybe sometimes in our life, we all have had this kind of uh, co-workers working with us or, or at school, right? So that is not good. That is something that nobody likes. The real problem is that sometimes bosses, they are not able to identify so what you should do, I, well, at the end, you should go and tell, right? This is something that I did, or uh, I, I don't know. There are many things that you can do, but this is something that definitely is not good. Verbal harassment or abuse, definitely. This is something that, as we say before, some companies, they don't even tolerate that one. One time and that's it, you go home. So this is something that is not good. It's, Totally the opposite from uh, being respectful, right? Uh, violence, of course, this is something that nobody wants. I mean, not at home, not at school, not at the workplace. I mean, if you are a person that is a grown up, of course, we don't expect any kind of violence. Non office related work, this is a difficult one. I mean, because sometimes we want to check the cell phone, we want to make some calls, we want to speak with other people, which is good, but not for a long time and not for things that are kind of, uh, I don't know, not related at all with, with our relationship there. So this is a tough one, uh, but yeah, it's something that we need to avoid. Extended breaks. Yeah, we need to rest a little bit, but I mean, you are not going to go smoking for one hour, right? So a little break, 10, 15 minutes is good enough. And then you need to go back and do the work. Theft embezzlement, of course. I mean, if somebody takes something from the co-workers or something from the company, that is not good at all. Sexual harassment, definitely. So this is another thing that is not good. Uh, almost all the companies in the code of conduct, they have, something that it says that is not permitted for you to have a relationship in the company. So it's because of this one. Corrupt practices, definitely. So that is not good at all. I mean, that is something that you don't want, right? So not at other level. Management employees and ethical behavior. This is something we're going to check um, in another session. So do you have any questions before we finish by now? Not the chart. Okay, please remember that for tomorrow we need to finish section one, section two, and the midterm test. It's very important. And uh, if you have questions, I will be checking there the group. Some of you already uh, wrote with me. You know that there are some exercises that they have some problems. So at the end, uh, uh, well, I reported them. I haven't had any response. Let's hope there are no more problems into those. So uh, just let me know if you have questions, but please try to do your best and finish those. We're going to finish by checking the attendance. And the one one of today is for Ramon. So Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. 
Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a good night. Rest very well. Dream in English. And see ya tomorrow. Thank you. Good Thank night. you, teacher. Good see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Hello, Ramon. Hello.